Hi there. Welcome to the Western Mass Moms Partnership Program. And this is the Mom Stress Management course. And we're going to take a look at Chapter 7. So as we go down the list, we're going to do a little relaxation breathing. We're going to take a look at my Violet and Mary, uh, lovely ladies who are helping us figure out how to control our thoughts and change our thoughts. We'll look at the way we relate to others and how that affects how we feel. Communication styles, which is really important. We're going to be, be taking a look at being assertive to get your needs met. We'll practice being assertive and then take a look at healthy and unhealthy relationships and intimate partner violence, which is an important topic for all of us. And then we'll take a look at handout. And there's resources to go along with this chapter that you should have gotten either online or a hard copy, depending on um, where you did your class. So if we review last class, which was class number six, even when life is stressful, you can choose to do pleasant activities. And when you do pleasant activities, you can change your mood and at least a small part of your life. And I just spoke with a mom the other day who said she realized that she's not been walking outside, which is a pleasant activity for her, and she wanted to put that back into her life in some way. So let's just do a deep breathing exercise to get us started. Uh, we want you to do the relaxation exercises as often as you can. And in your manual, you've got some things that are asking you to move your body. This one, I just want you to move your breath. So find a comfortable position, relax your shoulders, you know, kind of like crook your neck. Take a deep breath in, breathe in and breathe out. Nice, one more, breathe in and breathe out. Try to do that throughout the day. It'll make a difference in your stress level for sure. And teach your kids. Take a look at Mary and Violet on page 7.6. Cartoons, little cartoons with the bubble, uh, thought bubbles above each. I'm just going to read down Violet and then I'll read down Mary. So Violet says, I have such a bad headache, I'll go to the emergency room. I would have a really low mood at that point and you can see that that sad face at one or two then she thinks in the ER room they told me to go see my regular doctor oh I don't have I don't have one so I uh, and they gave me some names so I'm still upset because I don't have one and I don't know what to do and they didn't give me any medicine and they sure didn't help so I'm still cranky <laughs> and then the next one she says I don't know those doctors or where their offices are I I'm just going to go to bed and she kind of gives up. She, I'll lay down for a bit. I wish I would stop getting these headaches. And her mood is pretty dark and she doesn't feel really good at all. So we take a look at Mary. And Mary has the same scenario. I have such a bad headache, I'll go to the emergency room. So at least she's going to take care of herself and she goes to the emergency room. And in the emergency room, they told me to go see my regular doctor. I don't have one. So they gave me some names. And this is where Mary's mood changes because she has a thought, she has to be brave, and the thought is, I'll call the doctors and see where I can get an appointment. So being brave really pushed her to do action, which is going to get her at least an appointment, so at the end of the day, she has a better mood, because she got some help. So using your voice is an important part of asserting and taking care of yourself. So the way we relate, next page, 7.7, .7, the way we relate to others affects how we feel. Again, our relationships with others can have a big impact on our mood and our general well-being. When relationships are healthy, we are better able to cope with the stressors that come our way. Healthy relationships help us feel better. And you know when a relationship is healthy or unhealthy, you have an intuitive sense I call that your intuition. Sometimes you hear it in your heart, sometimes you feel it in your gut, but you know. So you want to keep your relationships healthy because they also have an impact on how you feel. So the next page, 7.8, communication styles. We want you to take a look at three different communication styles, passive, assertive, and aggressive. The passive style prioritizes the needs of 
of the other person. And so you kind of like back off, you ignore, you might withdraw. The assertive style emphasizes both the needs of the person who is initiating the communication and the other person. So there's a balance. You understand that there are needs. You both have needs. And of course, the aggressive style is where the needs of the self is prioritized. Um, and they seem aggressive in tone or in behavior. And the interpretation is making you feel uncomfortable. Um, they're asking you to take a look at some situations. You're in a clothing store and you can't find a salesperson. And when you finally find someone, they don't, they don't want to help you. And what do you do? Well, if it were passive, I would say fine. And I'd just leave. So I wouldn't even have an interaction with them. I would feel so uncomfortable. Um, if I were aggressive, I would be maybe a little boisterous. And what do you mean no one wants to help me? I really need some help. I'd like to buy something. Could you find somebody? Where's your manager? A <laughs> um, little aggressive. And it would certainly put that person off. And it wouldn't make me feel good. And the assertive emphasizes both. So I might say to the person, oh, I'm sorry. You don't really know how to help me. Is there anyone else we could find? Um, or do you have another suggestion for what I'm looking for? Now I'm kind of like paying attention to what that person is needing and what I'm needing, and I want a balance in between. Being assertive to get your needs met. I need your help, and I would specifically like to have this garment in this color if I were in a store looking for something. Or I'd like this garment, but do you have it in any other color? <laughs> so identify what you need first. Identify who you need to communicate it with. I need to communicate with the salesperson if I'm back in that scenario. Ask for what you need in a way that is clear and direct. Respect the other person's right not to do what you request. So if the salesperson said, no, I can't help you with that, I be, have to be willing to say, okay, thank you for letting me know that. Assert it. Practice it. So on the next page, they've got you practicing assertive responses uh, in different situations. So it would be helpful if you just go down the homework and write it in. And you know that you can get some help through the Moving Forward group, or you can call your CMHA, or you can call your clinician. We're all there to help you manage these new skills. On page 7.11, we're looking at healthy and unhealthy relationships. We've learned that healthy relationships can have a positive impact on our health and well-being. But it is also true that unhealthy relationships can negatively affect our health and well-being, making it more difficult to cope with life's stressors and sometimes putting us at great risk. It's important that you discern, that you decide for yourself if a relationship is healthy or unhealthy. And if it's unhealthy, find support and some help for yourself to figure out how to get out of that relationship and or change it, asking for what you want. On the next page, 7.12, is intimate partner violence. And we'd like to talk about that here because interpersonal and inter-intimate partner violence is a very serious um, communication and relationship issue that sometimes is not talked about. And we want to put it out here uh, and have a conversation about it. Intimate partner violence is a term used to describe abusive behavior within a close relationship whether living together or not. Intimate partner violence is a problem that affects communities everywhere. It crosses all ages, sexualities, races, ethnicities, social and economic backgrounds, cultures, and religions. It doesn't land anywhere. It just really peppers the whole environment. It covers all forms of abuse, and abusive behaviors and violence, not just physical. It can involve physical violence, sexual violence, emotional, verbal, and financial abuse, control, and threats. Abuse can range from a single event to ongoing episodes. It can make you question your reality 
and your sense of safety for yourself and your children. I call it crazy making. When you're in an abusive relationship, your mind is always trying to negotiate. So there's some very serious questions that they want you to think about for yourself or if you know someone else who is in a violent uh, partnership. Ask yourself, do you feel afraid of your partner? Do you feel afraid for your children and their safety? Do you avoid certain topics out of fear of angering your partner and what he or she might do when angered? Do you feel that you can't do anything right for your partner and are punished by him or her? Do you feel nervous or get a sick feeling when your partner is irritated or frustrated or angry? Do you change your behavior because of your partner's jealousy? And do you find yourself justifying your partner's controlling behavior? In other words, making excuses for what's going on. And then the questions are, does your partner humiliate, criticize, or yell at you or your children? Does your partner treat you in a way you're embarrassed for your, you'll be embarrassed in front of your friends or your family to see? Does your partner ignore or put down your opinions or accomplishments? Does your partner blame you for his or her own abusive behaviors? Does your partner hurt you or threaten to hurt you or to kill you or your children? These are serious allegations that need to be taken seriously. And does your partner control where you go, what you do, who you see, who you talk to on the phone, who you text? All of those are red flags that you really want to pay attention to. Please find somebody to talk to, whether it's through our organization or a local organization. Reach out, use your voice. You need um, support. So they're going to ask you to do your homework on page 7.3, what it's like for asking for help. Help what you need, um, who you're going to communicate it with, how you're going to be very clear and direct, what are you going to do if they say no, and you're, how are you going to be able to compromise. So try your hand at some of that. And then, of course, your mood scale, that's what it looks like. We want you to keep doing that. Um, take a look at your mood in relationship to how you express your needs and to whom that you express them. Then on page 715, um, people in my life and the ways they support me. We're going to ask you to take a look at people who are a practical support for you, someone you can go to for advice or information, someone who can be your companion, and someone who can give you emotional support. So take a look at this page, and I want you to write down the names of people in your life who can answer these questions, and maybe even put their phone numbers down so that you know you have it. In other words, this is a resource for you that you're going to develop. So who will you ask to, for instance, drive you to the hospital, lend you something that you need, or help you with some chores? Write down the names of some people in your life you could count on. Someone who you're looking for for advice or information. Who would you ask for for advice or information when you don't feel well, when you don't understand how to do something? Who could you call? Who can you talk to? It might even be a neighbor that you hadn't thought about. Put their name and their phone number. Companionship. Who will walk around the park with you? Who will spend the afternoon with you? Who will watch a movie with you? Who will have a cup of tea with you or a cup of coffee? So write down their names and their phone numbers. You don't have to call them all and tell them that they're on this list, but it will act as a re your resource because when you're feeling frustrated and you have to get someplace and you don't know what to do, you will have already thought about it and it's here in black and white and a phone number. And then the, ash, the last one is emotional support. Who will you look to for encouragement, understanding, and helping you when you're feeling down? It's important to keep those cheerleaders in your world. Who are they? Write them down and their phone numbers. And on the, on the last part, the optional homework, reach out to someone who gives you support. Engage in a pleasant activity or a conversation with this person. And we talked about pleasant activities. 
that you might have, a walk around the block or a cup of tea or just a visit. But find someone that you can reach out to to recognize the fact that they've been supportive and you want to give them support. Or offer support to someone else. Think about the different kinds of support you provide to people you care about. It could be someone you hadn't thought about before, but someone you'd like to be in touch with. Great. So I want to remind you about the Moving Forward group. They're always available for you, and I think you get emails probably twice a week. So please join those classes. Stay aware of the surveys that will be coming through Mathematica because you're in this study. And, of course, keep us informed if you move or if you change your phone number so that we can always be in touch. So take care of yourself. Do something pleasant for yourself. And we'll see you soon.